We are going to talk about uh, photosynthesis. Probably you could have heard about this uh, term. Uh, when we grow crops, we expect these crops to produce uh, high yields. We have got uh, breeders who are developing uh, crop varieties with the aim of uh, increasing uh, crop yields. Now, our yields could be in the form of uh, grain. And grain production in a plant is dependent on the efficiency of photosynthesis for that plant. In other words, photosynthesis is the process which involves the manufacturing of plant food or the process of manufacturing carbohydrates in a plant in the presence of the sun and also utilizing uh, carbon dioxide. And we want, and this, uh, sorry, and this plant is able to harvest sunlight uh, using uh, chlorophyll. So chlorophyll will enable the plant to get light. Once the plant is taken some light, it will then be able to process uh, carbohydrates. Of course, one of the imp key inputs will be the carbon dioxide, uh, which is taken in by the plant. So you need this sunlight, you need the carbon dioxide, and you need the plant to be green, and the presence of chlorophyll uh, in the plant. So we are going to see how plants, or we wanted to understand how plants actually process uh, carbohydrates. So I will make a presentation on uh, photosynthesis. So let's talk about uh, photosynthesis. The objectives of this uh, lecture is to address that first question. How do plants convert light energy into chemical energy? Uh, we want to understand the term uh, photosynthesis. In, in any case, that is the process uh, which plants use uh, to convert light energy to chemical energy. And we also need to understand the products of uh, photosynthesis. We've got what we call the light reaction, where we have uh, ATP and NADPH2. We've got the dark, in fact, light reaction produces uh, those uh, products, in fact, let me make a correction here. Uh, 
there's also oxygen. So oxygen is also produced during a light reaction. Then dark reaction produces a glucose. We also well, we need to understand the process of photosynthesis, the role played by chlorophyll in photosynthesis, uh, chloroplast basic structure, uh, what is light reaction. We need to understand this is Z scheme, non cyclic photophosphorylation and the cyclic photophosphorylation, uh, ATP and NADH2 products of light. I might as well add oxygen here. And oxygen, O2. Uh, we also want to learn something about the dark reaction or Calvin cycle, how it varies in the C3 plants, C4 plants, and the crassulacin acid metabolism, CAM plants. Uh, we try to get a bit on uh, photorespiration. In fact, uh, it is this photorespiration which can differentiate C3, C4, and the CAM plants. Then uh, we will talk about factors that can affect uh, photosynthesis. Here we've got a diagram showing the sun releasing uh, energy. And we have got a plant which is receiving sunlight. It is taking carbon dioxide. Uh, on the other hand, it is releasing oxygen. It's taking water from the soil. So this plant is manufacturing food using uh, carbon dioxide and releasing uh, energy so it needs sunlight it needs carbon dioxide and of course the the, the plant has to be green uh, it, it needs to have some chlorophyll to carry out uh, this function So here I've got the photosynthesis. Probably we could have uh, uh, understood photosynthesis as carbon dioxide plus water gives glucose and uh, oxygen. This is actually in the presence of light. This is actually a sort of a summary uh, of a whole lot of things which okay under photosynthesis. So let us focus on the key points in photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the major energy storing process. So we have light energy stored as chemical energy in organic compounds. The process by which plants, autotrophic plants, 
some bacteria and some bacteria uh, use light energy to make glucose sugar and other organic molecules from carbon dioxide and water so it is this process which these plants utilizes uh, utilize carbon dioxide and water to manufacture glucose or sugar that is what is uh, photosynthesis the raw materials are carbon dioxide and uh, water and the products are sugar and oxygen Light energy is absorbed by pigments and it drives the reactions of photosynthesis. So light is required. ATP and NADPH2 are formed during light reactions. Oxygen from water is liberated as gas The steps of Calvin cycle are controlled by enzymes. This is actually the dark reaction. Light reactions okay in the grana, dark reactions okay in the stroma. This is the, th these are parts of the chlorophyll, a chloroplast. So let us talk about the leaf and the chloroplast. We want to look at the structure and function. Anyway, the chloroplast okay within the leaf. That's why the leaf is uh, green. So yeah, I've got the chloroplast which is simply a container made up of membranes inner membrane and outer membrane there are also some uh, discs known as the thylakoid And this is where the photosystem two, which we will talk about, occurs. Now the thylakoid is joined to other thylakoid by the stroma lamella. This is structure. If we pull it, this is out. Pull this structure out. We can see that this thylakoid is a pile of. Uh, secular objects then we have got the stroma lamella which is this part which joins the thylakoid and this is where the photosystem one uh, takes place in the stroma uh, photosystem uh, yeah photosystem one uh, takes place in that uh, in that area Okay, uh, no, I think photosystem one in the, yes, in the, yeah, in the stroma lamella. Now, let us describe the chloroplast. The intermembrane 
space is called the stroma. Of course, it is the outer and the inner membranes, like I have uh, shown you. The thylakoids are staked into a gran. So these uh, thylakoids, which looks like wheels paired on each other, form the grana. Now, photosynthetic pigments such as chlorophyll and beta carotene are built into the membranes of the uh, thylakoids. That's why they are green. There are two basic classes of pigments. Number one, we've got chlorophylls. These are the greenish pigments which contain a porphyrin ring. Uh, probably later it, 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 it may be described, this porphyrin ring. This is a stable ring-shaped molecule around which electrons are free to migrate. We have got uh, chlorophyll A and B. Chlorophyll looks green because it absorbs red and blue light. Uh, which become unavailable uh, to our eyes. That's why we see chlorophyll as green. The green light is not absorbed by the chloroplast. That's why we see it as green. The red and the blue light which is absorbed is available for photosynthesis. And we assume that uh, green light is not used for photosynthesis. Number two, we have got the carotenoids. These are red, orange, or yellow pigments. Probably you have uh, seen carrots. It contains uh, the compound carotene. That's why they are orange or yellow. The carotenoids cannot transfer sunlight energy directly to the photosynthetic pathway, but must pass their absorbed energy to the chlorophyll. So they pass their energy to chlorophyll A and B. Yeah, for this reason, carotenoids are known as uh, accessory pigments. We have got two structures, one for chlorophyll and one for human blood. You can see the difference is that uh, chlorophyll has got magnesium whereas blood has got uh, iron. Uh, this is the light with its different colors. We are saying the green part uh, is what we see when light flashes on the plant. Th these other parts of the light are utilized in uh, photosynthesis and the green light is not. This is, is representing uh, the chloroplast. When light hits the chloroplast, the green light uh, is uh, reflected. So in photosynthesis, there are two processes, the light reaction and the dark reaction, or light independent reaction. We have got the chloroplast,
we have got the light reaction, which is taking place in these uh, discs. So light hits these discs. Water is taken in and oxygen uh, is released. And at the same time, ATP is formed, NADPH2 is also formed. In the Calvin cycle or dark reaction, carbon dioxide is consumed by this cycle. It also consumes ATP and NADPH2, and it will release NADP and ADP is also released. However, the importance of this Calvin cycle is the production of uh, sugar. Here we've got the antenna. Well, we are using it as a symbol because uh, it's Thus, the place where light can be captured or received. So we have got sunlight being captured by this antenna, which is made up of carotenoids, chlorophyll B, and the chlorophyll A. Now, light reaction uh we are going to consider what is known as the non-cyclic photophosphorylation uh, this one basically consists of uh, two parts photosystem two and the photosystem one or what you can call PS1 is photosystem one, PS2 is photosystem two, in short. PS1 was discovered first, but the process starts with PS2. Both system, systems take place on the thylakoid uh, membrane. Here we have got a diagram which is going to explain the non cyclic photophosphorylation. Here we have got a chip here with, with a big hammer, which is the photon, and that ball here represents the electron, which is flipped upwards and it is caught by this lead here, then the lead releases this uh, electron onto this uh, slope, uh, and it is going to turn the mirror, which makes ATP, which is released here. And there's also another chip here with a big photon hammer, who is going to hit this uh, thing and flips the electron up to the chap here, who is going to catch the electron and finally puts it in the jar. Uh, here, we are going to have NADPH uh, being formed. So these are the two products of uh, light reaction, non-cyclic photophosphorylation, uh, which are produced. ATP and NADPH. This is photosystem two, which is represented here, and this is photosystem one. This is just uh, symbolic so that uh, we may remember this uh, non uh, photophosphorylation. Uh, cycle or a root non-cyclic photophosphorylation uh, root sorry we have got a diagram 
which may help us to understand the light reaction. Uh, this is the part of the chloroplast. Uh, we are seeing the cross section of the thin membrane. I want to highlight two specific areas. I hope you are seeing my case. Where it is written PE, this wall area with the P60, that is where we have chlorophyll A and B plus uh, carotene, carotenoids. We've got also another area with PE here. Actually, PE represent prim primary electron acceptor. Uh, we are having P700. It also houses chlorophyll A and B plus carotenoids. So we can distinguish two areas uh, here. So these areas receive light, and we've indicated here light there and light there. So let us look at what can happen when light hits the chlorophyll and the carotene carotenoids in the P680. Uh, this is big, is the what is known as the reaction sender. Electrons will get excited, then they will go to primary electron acceptor. Now the P680 will have to get its electrons from water, which is going to split into hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen is electron liberated. So this reaction sender will always get its electrons from water. So the primary electron acceptor here will release electrons to PQ. Then PQ will release uh, it's electrons to CYT. PQ is plastoquinone. CY is uh, cytochrome. So what is going to happen is that as the PQ, as the electrons leave PQ to CYT, Hydrogen ions from the stroma will be pushed to the thylakoid when the electrons cross this uh, area here. So from cytochrome, they move to another electron acceptor. known as the PCY plastocyanin. Now from plastocyanin, they will go to P700. Uh, P700 meanwhile will have uh, received light and it would have lost its electron to the primary electron acceptor. So its loss are compensated by electrons from plastocyanin. Then from this primary electron acceptor, the electrons are removed to FD, ferrodoxin. Once they reach ferrodoxin, they will be released to NADP, which will form NADPH. 
Now, as these electrons move from the primary electron acceptor to ferrodoxin or FD, hydrogen ions are also pumped uh, into the into this uh, into this thylakoid. Now, as the electrons move uh, within this root, at the same time, hydrogen ions are also moving into the thylakoid. So eventually, we are going to have a high concentration of hydrogen ions uh, in the thylakoid. These hydrogen ions will follow the ATP synthesis to get out of the thylakoid, which is now a high potential of hydrogen ions, moving to a low potential area, which is up in the stroma. Now, their movement will spin uh this part here of the atp synthesis which will generate atp so you have adp plus p which will form atp it's like a generator uh which is going to form in fact it's like a wheel which is going to turn as it turns it forms ATP. Yeah, it, it looks a bit complicated, but uh, it helps us to visualize uh, what is taking place in the chloroplast. So I'm going to move on to another diagram, which is a bit uh, simpler. Basically, this diagram is showing us uh, two systems. Photosystem 2 with the P68 and photosystem 1 with the P700. And the, the P700 receives light, P60 receives light. Let us start with the P60. After receiving light, uh, because it is containing chlorophyll A and B and carotenoids, they get excited and the electrons are lost to the primary electron acceptor. In order to replace these electrons which are lost, they take electrons from water, which causes its splitting into hydrogen and oxygen, which is liberated. Then these electrons go to the primary electron acceptor. Later, they go to plastoquinone. From plastoquinone, they go to cytochrome complex. From cytochrome complex, they go to plastocyanin. Then they go to P700. Meanwhile, P700 would have been excited by the sunlight and would have lost its electrons to the primary electron acceptor. So these electrons from plastocyanin are now replacing what P700 is losing to the primary electron acceptor. These electrons will now go to ferrodoxin from the primary acceptor of PS1. Then uh, they will be donated to NADP, uh, which will form NADPH. 
so NADPH is formed. ATP is formed somewhere uh, here, where ADP plus P forms the ATP. But we now know it's uh, generated by ATP synthesis. Uh, if we use the other diagram. So what is produced by this system is NADPH, ATP, and uh, oxygen. So we may have to go all over again on using these notes. Uh, when we say everything starts with the photosystem two, where we have light energy, which will strike the chlorophyll and the carotene molecules. Uh, chlorophyll and carotene form light harvesting complexes. There will be movement of electrons from molecule to molecule, uh, which is known as resonance. The molecules become excited and the electrons will move to higher levels. The chain of events will cause P60 to lose an electron or electrons which are received by the electron acceptor. The electron then passes through plastoquinone, cytochrome complex, plastocyanin, uh, electron transport uh, chain. So this is an electron uh, transport uh, chain. Uh, P160 will gain an electron from uh, water by splitting it into hydrogen and oxygen ions. The process of splitting water is known as uh, photolysis. Uh, please note that uh, photolysis requires manganese and uh, chlorine. Uh, previously, we were talking about uh, micronutrients. Probably here you can appreciate where micronutrients are being used in photosynthesis. The hydrogen contribute to the proton gradient in the thylakoid. Uh, here we are talking of the movement of hydrogen ions uh, from the stroma into the thylakoid because of the electron uh, movement. We know that uh, later on they will move out via the ATP synthesis leading to the production of ATP. Oxygen will exit the leaf via the stomata. Energy is used to pump ions from the stroma into the thylakoid. It creates a high gradient of high hydrogen ions inside the thylakoid. The hydrogen ions pass through the ATP synthase protein by diffusion. The hydrogen ions will cause ADP to combine with the PI to form ATP. Now we move on to photosystem one. It starts with the P700, which receives photons from uh, sunlight. P700 gets excited and loses an electron to the primary electron acceptor. Then plastocyanin supplies the electrons to P700. The electrons will finally reach ferrodoxin. NADP 
would be converted to NADPH. So what are the products of light reaction? They are ATP, NAD, pH, and oxygen. A light reaction involves non-cyclic photophosphorylation, which we have just uh, talked about. And it also consists of cyclic photophosphorylation. So we are going to talk about uh, cyclic photophosphorylation. This then is cyclic photophosphorylation. I will go through this uh, diagram. Light from the sun will hit P700, which is composed of chlorophyll A and B, plus also carotene. It will release two electrons to the primary electron acceptor, which will move again to another primary electron acceptor. Then they will go to plastoquinone, from plastoquinone to cytochrome complex, from cytochrome complex to plastocyanin, from plastocyanin to P700. And they will continue into in this circular motion. Uh, this will result in ADP being combined with uh, phosphorus to form ATP. So this cyclic photophosphorylation will produce ATP. So like I said on the diagram, cyclic photophosphorylation, we have a light which strikes P700 which will lose an electron. The electron is taken by primary electron acceptor. It is passed to the electron transport system of PS2 and then back to P700. The electron transport system of PS2 will cause accumulation of hydrogen ions in the thyroid and cause ATP production. Now we want to see how carbon dioxide is fixed by plants. Carbon dioxide is fixed, is used in the duck reaction or Calvin cycle. Although the process is known as duck reaction, it also takes place during the day. It takes place in the stroma of the chloroplasts. So once again, we look at the chloroplast. We are now interested in this side, the way carbon dioxide goes straight into the Calvin cycle and produces sugar. It requires ATP from a light reaction. It requires NADPH2 from light reaction as well. <coughs> There are variations in the Calvin cycle. This depends on the plant adaptations. We have got the plants adapted to temperate climates. This is wheat. We have got plants adapted to arid and dry climate environments. This is the cactus species. We have got plants which are adapted to tropical areas. Uh, this is maize and sorghum. Now, with the Calvin cycle, plants which are adapted to the temperate climates like wheat are called C3 plants and they are affected by photorespiration. I will later explain 
this uh, term for the respiration. We have C4 plants, which are maize and the sorghum. And we have crassulacin acid metabolism, which is the cam plants. Carvin cycle or dark reaction. This is the second stage of photosynthesis, which takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast and can, can occur without the presence of light. In this stage, known as the Calvin cycle, carbon molecules from carbon dioxide are fixed into glucose. Calvin cycle, now, <clears throat> now carbon, fixation or light independent reaction. We have got C3 plants, 80% of plants on earth are C3. And this process occurs in the stroma. It uses ATP and NADPH from the light reaction. It uses carbon dioxide. Well, for convenience, we, we, we have put a diagram so that we can understand the parts of the Calvin cycle. CO2 is the entry. We have got reactions which are classified as the carboxylation reactions. Then we've got the reduction reactions. We've got the regeneration reactions. So let us focus on the dark reaction or Calvin cycle. We've got NAD, pH, and ATP, which are used to reduce carbon dioxide to sugar. We've got the ribulose biphosphate, bisphosphate, carboxylase, oxygenase, uh, rubisco, which is an enzyme which catalyzes the first step in carbon cycle or photosynthesis. We have carbon dioxide, uh, which reacts with ribulose, one five bisphosphate. So carbon dioxide is to be added to ribulose one five bisphosphate in order to get two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate, or PGA. Here I've got the full cycle of the Calvin, uh, yeah, full cycle of this uh, carbon dioxide fixation, the Calvin cycle. So here we have, uh, I hope you'll see the case. Here we have carbon dioxide, being combined with ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. And this is catalyzed by rubisco. What we get is 3-phosphoglycerate PGA with the three carbon atoms plus one phosphate. This is carboxylation reaction. Then, this PGA, we have uh, ATP, which is going to be converted to ADP. It is going to be phosphorylated so that it becomes 1,3-phosphoglycerate uh, or 1,3-bisphosphate. Uh, one sorry, it becomes one three phosphoglycerate, yes, uh, with uh, two phosphates one at position uh, phosphate at position one and another phosphate at position uh, three. 
Now this compound will be reduced by NADPH, which becomes NADP. After reduction, we get an important compound known as glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, or in short, G3P. That is after the reduction. Now the G3P molecule can be converted to glucose, fatty acids, or amino acids. The other five, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate or G3P, will be regenerated into ribulose 5 phosphate. During the regeneration, phosphorus is lost here. Yeah. Then the ribulose 5 phosphate, uh, it gains another phosphorus. When ATP is converted to ADP, then we will have regenerated ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate, which will enter into the reaction and the things start all over again. So these are the, <clears throat> what I've been talking about, the stages in the, in the Calvin cycle. We were starting with a five carbon sugar molecule called the ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate or RUBP in short is the acceptor that binds carbon dioxide dissolved in the stroma. Carbon dioxide fixation is catalyzed by the enzyme Robisco, forming an unstable six carbon molecule. This molecule quickly breaks down to give two molecules of three carbon which is 3-phosphoglycerate. Also called phosphoglyceric acid. The two molecules of Uh, PGA are converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or G3P. This is a 3-carbon sugar phosphate. Now, three tens of that cycle use, using three molecules of carbon dioxide can produce six molecules of G3P or glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. One of the six molecules of G3P exits the cycle and will be used to form uh, glucose. The other five molecules of G3P enter a complex regeneration process to produce more RUBP or ribulose 1 5 bisphosphate. Now, two molecules of G3P produced. by a total of six tenths of the cycle combined to form one molecule of uh, glucose. Well, these are the other details. Yeah, I just want to explain photorespiration. Now, when it is hot, 
the stomata respond by closing. This means that oxygen is limited to enter the plant, but at the same time, oxygen is produced by photosynthesis, uh, which can accumulate in the plant. What is going to happen is that uh, Rubisco is going to facilitate the reaction of oxygen and RUBP or ribulose 15 bisphosphate. And it will lead to a lower production of glucose, which is inefficient. Whereas the Calvin cycle produces a high output of uh, glucose. So oxygen and the carbon dioxide may compete for RUBP. So under certain circumstances, uh, plants may go into photorespiration, which is wasteful. The carbon-4 pathway, plants that use this pathway are called the C4 plants, and they have stomata closed during the wet part of the day. PEP carboxylase enzyme fixes carbon dioxide for a four carbon compound when CO2 is low and oxygen is high. We've got examples of, of maize, sugarcane, crabgrass, and usually tropical uh, climates. So what happens is that the PEP will reduce photorespiration in this case by relocating the Calvin cycle in the vascular bundles. You know, the Calvin cycle is, is now been moved into the vascular bundles away from the oxygen which can cause uh, photorespiration. So there's a structural uh, adaptation in order to solve the problem of uh, uh, photorespiration. This structural adaptation will separate oxygen and the carbon dioxide. So PEP will pick carbon dioxide away from the oxygen and then uh, the Calvin cycle will okay at a safe place, the vascular band. It's a survival mechanism. Other plants known as the crassulacin acid metabolism, CAM plants, will also avoid the photorespiration. They use four pathways, C4 pathways, but uh, they segregate CO2 assimilation and Calvin cycle between day and night. Calm plants open their stomata at night. and conserve water and carbon dioxide uh, actual carbon dioxide is assimilated into malic acid and is stored at high concentration in the cell vacuoles during the day the stomata close and the stored malic acid gradually release co2 and the CO2 is used now by the Calvin cycle whilst the stomata is crossed. For the, yeah, this is the example of the CAM pathway. Water conserving, uh, it's a water conserving uh, pathway. Usually the plants in the dry areas, what dry areas, 
uh, open their stomata during the night and close it during the day. Uh, we've got examples like pineapples and cactus. Let us look at the factors affecting photosynthesis. Uh, plant genotypes. We can have uh, plants with hereditary traits, which can minimize uh, photorespiration. Because photorespiration is a hereditary trait that can reduce uh, plant productivity. So breeding can actually solve this uh, problem by improving uh, photosynthesis efficiency. Light, if we increase light, uh, we can increase the rate of uh, photosynthesis, but there comes a time where light uh, will no longer increase uh, photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide, we can increase carbon dioxide. As we increase it, we also increase uh, photosynthesis. But there comes a point where uh, photosynthesis will no longer increase as we increase carbon dioxide. Now with the temperature, uh, if we increase the temperature, uh, the rate of photosynthesis is also uh, increased, but at high temperature, it starts to drop. Maybe at this stage, respiration is also increasing uh, with the temperature. Here we've got uh, plants which are capable of carrying out photosynthesis over a wide range of temperature, active re arctic region, at uh, zero degrees Celsius, Antarctic region at minus 18 degrees Celsius, cyanobacteria, you know, can carry out photosynthesis at 75 degrees Celsius. But most plants can do it, can photosynthesize around 10 to 25 degrees Celsius. Water, drought causes a closure of stomata and it limits carbon dioxide supply to the plant. The bean, Phaseolus vulgaris, can increase solid concentration of guard cells to keep the stomata open. So this can reduce uh, the problem of uh, carbon dioxide uh, supply. Mineral nutrients, the key Elements, magnesium, nitrogen are part of the chlorophyll uh, molecule. So they should be present. Iron is necessary for chlorophyll synthesis and is an electron uh, carrier in the light reaction. Manganese, chlorine, calcium are required for water splitting in order to get electrons required by the P680 or photosystem uh, 2 and the non cyclic uh, photophosphorylation. So we can relate the importance of mineral nutrients uh, to the photosynthesis. This then is the summary of this lecture on photosynthesis. Uh, we have discussed the leafy structure. Chlorophyll A and B, carotenoids, 
é, cloroplast de teracoid, grana, light reaction with biscari discussed non-cyclic photophosphorylation and the cyclic photophosphorylation. Uh, we went on to talk about the Calvin cycle, the dark reaction, C3 pathway, C4 pathway, the CAM pathway, uh, and at last, we discussed the factors affecting photosynthesis, plant genotypes, carbon dioxide, the light, temperature, water, and the mineral salts. So this is actually the end of this lecture. I have to stop here. So we have just gone through photosynthesis. Uh, we discussed, we talked about uh, quite a lot of uh, issues uh, in the uh, photosynthesis. Probably I will do more recordings on photosynthesis, focusing on uh, focusing on certain uh, topics like light reaction or dark reaction so that I can make some uh, illustrations which may make it uh, possible to remember some of these uh, issues. So I will stop here. <laughs>